Hey there, welcome back to another video. Today I want to take a first look at the new Son Hubdynamo, the 29S. If you aren't familiar with Son, Son stands for Schmidt's Originale Namdynamos, which translates to Schmidt's Original Hubdynamos, founded in 1995. That means that they are now 30 years old and have quite a lot of experience on the market. They are being produced in Tübingen, Germany, which is only 150 kilometers away from Freiburg. So if I get the chance to visit them I might make a factory tour but that is for another video. They are a team of 30 people and what they are all passionate about is cycling and making high-end very durable products for bike enthusiasts. Actually my father has owned a Sonhub Dynamo um, since 2003 so it's quite an old version. It's interesting to see their design back then but he has never had any problems with it. This one is still rolling and was being used daily for many many years. There's a reason why so many people going on world tours do choose a Son version. Obviously there are also other Hub Dynamo versions on the market, most of them being produced by Shimano but then for example there's also Shutter Precision which is also a high quality option but there are certain things I really appreciate about the Son Hub Dynamo. One being that it is produced locally in Germany and that they have such a good reputation for being very durable. Now, why would you choose a Hub Dynamo? As far as I know, especially in America, Hub Dynamos aren't really used that much. In Germany, nearly every bike has one. But I think it's really sensible. You always have light. You can't forget to charge or bring your clip-on lights. And it's just very reliable. And even if you don't want to use it for your light, as there are certain downsides, you can still use it to charge your devices using a charger. Therefore, that is also a good reason to go with one. Now, there's the dynamo. And then also included is a manual and also included is a coax socket that is the adapter from the light cable to the dynamo itself. Now the first thing you notice is its rather unique shape. If I compare this to the Son 28 you can see it is very different. The spherical shape from the 28 version is the one which most recognize as a Son hub because most other versions on the market from Shimano for example have a cylindrical shape and in my opinion this looks immediately a lot more sportive and less noticeable, less bulky. About a year ago Shutter Precision together with DT Swiss launched a version of the PL7 which brought a bit of attention to the whole hub dynamo game especially in sportive applications and I believe that the 29 S version is Son's answer to that and I strongly believe that this is a real alternative. Now regarding the name, as this is called 29 and this is called 28, some might believe perhaps that it has to do with the wheel size and it isn't the case that if you have a 29 inch wheel you have to go with this version and if you have a 28 inch wheel you have to go with that one. I believe the names given to these models has more of a historic reason and that's because many years ago you might remember when 26 inch wheels were around and 28 inch wheels were only used on road cycling where no one used hub dynamos and then more and more the bike industry used 28 inch also on touring and commuting bikes or everyday bikes and I'm only speculating but I could imagine that then Son thought well okay let's call the newer model 28 and I believe the same applies on the newer version that I mean 29 inch wheels have been around for quite some time but more on mountain bikes where using a hub dynamo is also not common but because bikepacking and bike races are becoming more and more popular I believe that this might be the reason for the name but in the end you can use both versions on both wheel sizes. Now shortly to the way a hub dynamo functions there are magnets inside and by rotating the wheel these pass stationary coils of wire and thereby creating an electric current which is then passed through the wire either to the light or the charger or both. I won't go into too much technical detail but I will go over all the structural differences and in my opinion those differences which are most important for most people as I consider all of Son's dynamos 
very high quality and whilst there are some differences in efficiency or power output I don't believe it's actually that important for most people because it still depends on the area of application and whether each model can even fit your bike. If you want to go into the nitty gritty about the power output I recommend an article from Ali Denham from Cycling About where he took a closer look at a test comparing all the different models. According to the test the 29S version does give out more power, roughly 20%, which is quite something, but not the only difference that is important. So let's go through all the other differences. On the 29S version, they somehow moved those magnets and coils to the left hand side. And what this does is it makes the dynamo look very sleek in my opinion, especially because you have the brake rotor on this side. It covers the bulky part. And normally when looking at a front hub dynamo, you can recognize it immediately whilst on this one it isn't that easy and in my opinion especially on road and gravel bikes which are now being used more and more also for tours it's a really nice change just looks wise and whilst looks aren't everything to some it is more important but it is nice and does suit a more sportive bike even better up to now you can only get the new model in black now, while Son offers their other models in various standards, fitting many different bikes, the 29S fits forks with an OLD of 100mm and a 12mm through axle. Now, different to the more minimalistic, sportive looking shape is also that this version uses straight pull spokes, which is also something more seen on road or gravel bikes. Now, the new model comes in three different versions, one of them being the one I have, which has 24 spokes, and all of them have a tangential lace pattern. This means that the spokes on both sides cross each other. It comes with 12 spokes on each side and only with a center lock adapter. The next version are actually both of these. They only, ah, no, crazy. The next version comes either in 16 and eight or 16 and 16 spokes and has a radial lace pattern on the non-brake side, so on the drive hand side. It always has 16 spokes on the brake side and you can choose whether to go with eight or 16 spokes on the drive hand side. The reason why I was so confused just now is that the third version had the wrong picture showing the first version with both sides having a tangential lace pattern but actually the third version is the second one going by the name TR with the only difference being the standard used for the rotor mount. One is center lock and the other uses the six bolt standard but both have radial spokes on the right side which I didn't want for different reasons. Due to the spokes being angled the torsional forces produced during braking are distributed and absorbed more effectively. Based on how forces act in a wheel, having the spokes at an angle will improve the handling of torsional stress which is being introduced when braking. A colleague, also a bike mechanic, who has already built up a wheel using the new 29S but the TR version, has received feedback that it causes vibrations, which hypothetically could be due to the spokes being laced radially. Whether that is actually true or whether that was due to something else, I can't tell. And even if it didn't make a difference, I think tangential laced spokes look nicer anyway, having a similar lace pattern on the rear wheel and I also already had the suitable rims. I visited their booth at this year's Eurobike and they also had a wheel set from Pyrope, but this isn't something from Son and if you're interested in a wheel set using Pyrope spokes but have the latest and greatest hub dynamo from Son, then check them out on the Pyrope website. Another thing that is special about the new model is that it has the coax socket directly integrated into it and normally there are two pins sticking out to which you attach these shoes which are crammed to the cable but this has certain disadvantages as they are sometimes a real pain to take off and put back on even risking breaking them that is one thing which is in my opinion not the best solution especially when being on tour if you break the connection then you don't have any light so Son does offer also an upgrade kit which enables you to use the coax system but on the 29S it is standard the coax socket does away with only one connection and not two and it is pretty easy to take on and off which reduces the risk of harming your cables therefore it is a system which I would recommend upgrading to anyway one reason why most hub dynamos fail eventually is because moisture gets through the seals of the bearings 
into the hub dynamo and then the magnets and the coils eventually corrode. Very special about all Son hub dynamos is that they have a pressure relief system and the way it works is actually pretty simple. It is a little tube which is wrapped around and one end ends in the dynamo itself whilst the other one ends to the outside. This allows the air pressure inside and outside to equalize, preventing a vacuum from forming and moisture entering through the bearings. The problem is if you apply too much grease on your axle and install it that the grease actually blocks that hole, blocks the entrance and by that preventing the system from working. So keep that in mind when maintaining your axle because that is a unique feature to these dynamos and it would be a shame to lose that advantage especially since you also want the hub dynamo to work as long as possible. How does the new 29s version compare to the famous 28? I've touched on some points, one being the looks. The new one is a lot sleeker and not as bulky. Also you can use straight pull spokes. The 29s offers about 20% more power. This will charge your devices quicker and also if you have a light with a high beam like I have on my Outback then the light will stop to flicker at lower speeds. The 29S is also lighter than the 28 version. This isn't a fair comparison as this is a boost version, so 110 millimeters, and this one uses a six volt standard, which adds a bit more material. And the actual difference to a 28 version with a non-boost standard, so 100 millimeters and center lock would be less. So the 29S comes in at 388 grams, whilst the Boost 28 with a 6 volt standard comes in at 482. Now where there is a noticeable difference is price wise. The newer 29S model will set you back 439 euros whilst depending on the specifications on the 28 model it will set you back 319 to 349 euros. That's a price difference of 90 to 120 euros. Because this is a relatively new model it isn't available in so many variations. As I said before it is only compatible with a 12 by 100 millimeter through axle. The 28 model on the other hand is available in a 50mm by 100mm OLD through axle or 15 by 110mm so a boost standard also as a quick release skewer and of course also available for a 12mm by 100mm OLD just as the new 29S. The question which one you should get is therefore also determined by the standards of your bike. Nice about the 28 version is also that you have multiple color choices if you are looking for a suitable hub dynamo for your touring bike, the 28 version is great as you can go up to 36 spokes. Another advantage is that if you have a touring bike with a steel fork, like for example on the expedition bikes from Two Terrain, we use a direct contact making these pins superfluous and therefore only by installing the front wheel into the fork you will have contact and you won't have to plug in the cables onto the pins. This is an even easier system than the coax adapter and whilst the coax adapter is better than using the pins as it's not as difficult to take it on and off. With the direct contact you don't need to bother to take on and off the cables at all. Also as the 28 version uses J-band spokes the chance of you finding replacement in case you break some will be much higher. I hope I made the differences clear between the newer 29S and the previous 28 version. Both have their advantages and disadvantages and check your bike for compatibility whether the 29S version is even an option. If so, think about whether it's worth the additional price for you and on which bike with which purpose you want to use the hub. If you already have the 28 version, you might ask yourself whether it is worth upgrading to the newer model. Generally, I wouldn't say so because the upgrade will cost you a lot of money. And to be honest, probably most people won't benefit too greatly from those additional 20% power. Obviously, every person has their own reasons. For some, only the sportive look might be a reason to spend the money. For example, if you have a light with a high beam and you are cycling in the dark very often, then it might be actually worth considering upgrading as you can still sell your older wheel and reinvest that in the new one. If you have a touring bike, I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you use the direct contact. If you're using a charger whilst traveling and you are depending on it, then the 20% more power might also be appealing. To sum it up, I would generally recommend going for the 29 
S version if you're going to use it on a more sportive bike. That is also what I think Son designed this for. And if you're looking for a touring bike, the 28 version is still a great choice and in some cases even the better one in my opinion. My personal plan for this dynamo is to build a wheel set, obviously. I'm going to build up a new gravel bike, the new Two Terrain Cirrus, and I'm not going to use this to power a light, but instead the new Plug Pure 7. And because it is a very sportive gravel bike, which I'm also going to use on bikepacking trips, having the ability to charge my devices on the go is something really practical. Actually, I'm not going to build the wheels myself, but instead Simon from Simon Rad Service. He is also the one from whom I got the rims for our Outbacks and who will also build up the wheels for Anna's Outback. If you're interested in the wheel building process of these wheels, be sure to check out that video. On the gravel bikes, I'm going to go with some higher rims. I will also go with the new Shimano GRX 1x12 Di2 group set. So stay tuned for a review and some nice bike build videos. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope I could give you some insights into the new 29S model from Son and make the differences clear between it and the 28 version. If I have missed anything or something was unclear, be sure to write a comment. And I would also be interested in your experience with hub dynamos, particularly particularly with Son, but also from other manufacturers. Until then, I wish you a nice day and see you in the next video. Bye!